and welcome to Close Up with the Hollywood Reporter. We're joined today by Reese Witherspoon, Elizabeth Moss, Nicole Kidman, Jessica Lange, Oprah Winfrey, and Chrissy Metz. Let's dive right into this. Between the six of you, you have tackled ageism, sexism, misogyny, depression, domestic abuse, adultery, rape. I could go on here. When was the last time on your shows you were genuinely scared to tell a story? Well, I was genuinely nervous to take on um, the role of Deborah Lax and Henrietta Lax. Why? Because look at this table. <laughs> I, I come as um, the least experienced person at this table. Uh, I come as a person who has great respect for the craft of uh -huh. acting, but not really developing the craft. Mm -hmm. So uh, to take on something as, um, I mean, that was really, uh, I was really afraid to do that. I really was... Uh, afraid of what exactly? I was afraid of making a fool of myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the number that. one fear. That's every day. The color purple is <laughs> so amazing. I know, I know I'm having trouble with this too. <laughs> when was that? That was like 30 years ago now. So, and also, let me tell you what actually made me even more, mm -hmm. uh, like, intimidated. <laughs> I just finished doing a film with uh, Reese mm -hmm. uh, and Ava DuVernay and Mindy Kale, and we were all there. And I just happened to ask Reese, remember this, Reese? I said, Reese, how many films have you done? And you said, oh, honey child. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah. Do you all know how many movies you've done? No, but it was a big number. You said, I don't know, 100 or so. And uh, I <laughs> 100 thought, movies. Yes, and so I was thinking, oh, God, I hope she doesn't say that to me mm. because m my number would be like, <laughs> And I think five, maybe. <laughs> oh, that should be. I think I've done maybe one independent. <laughs> really? So, yeah. That be. <laughs> so, this, so yes, it's a very intimidating thing, and I don't take it lightly. I mean, I understand. I remember when you did the hours. Remember, I called you up and said, "Girl." You did. Yes. Remember? Oh, you had a premonition. <laughs> yeah, I had a premonition. I said, "Girl, get ready. Put your dress on." <laughs> she did. Yes, I did. She did. Because I have, and I said, "No." No. I have no. such regard for what it takes to dismantle yourself, open yourself up vulnerably, mm. and let the energy and spirit of another character come through that. All of these bad things, they never would have happened, because my mama, my mother, she would have, she would have slapped on it, and she would have told Gallen, you stop it! You stop it, that's my daughter! You stop it, that's my daughter! You just stop it! And, the, and, and, and what it means to, to craft that. So sure. that's why, to answer your question. Well, your performance was wonderful. Yes. I loved mm. the movie. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. It was wonderful. And important, I think it's important that people know that story because I think people don't they know don't. about Henrietta Lacks. Mm -mm. No, I it's didn't. It's scary because manic and depressive, but yet hopeful and mm -hmm. not, it's not, you know, obviously, which, which is what you want is mm -hmm. not all one thing, but a whole range of craziness. That's yeah. what I said to George Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> There's a range of craziness. There's a range right. of craziness in, in, in many of these characters. So what for the, the rest of you? Were there moments? I mean, you certainly have some pretty powerful, dark uh, scenes. I mean, you do, you, I mean, you, you all do. Which ones make you nervous? Didn't get in your way, you still did them. I don't know if I was nervous mm. about the 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 scene it scenes themselves just the book itself is so prolific mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. beloved so that was my only sort of uh, I wanted to make sure that we were going to to do the book justice uh -huh. and do it in the way that it should be done or we were going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my only fear and hesitation, not telling the story because that's, I, I love doing that. I don't have any fear with scary stories. That's what I want to do. <laughs> but the, <laughs> but mm. the, the book is so, people hold it very highly as they should. So my hesitation, I took a while to say yes to it. Um, it took like six weeks to say yes because I wanted to make sure we were going to do a good job, you know. I spoke to Bruce, our showrunner, uh, first and foremost, and we ended up talking for about an hour and a half, and I just asked him what he wanted to make, you know, how mm -hmm. he saw it, what the visuals were. The visuals were so important to me. And the music, casting, everything. We just went into everything. Um, what he thought it might be like as far as, like, is it like this show? Is it like that mm -hmm. movie, you know? Um, what I loved is he was like, I, wanna, I don't want to do anything that anyone's ever done before. And I was like, oh, that's a good answer. I asked for the second script because I know the second script can be a little bit of a, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Everybody gets story. excited over yeah. the pilot. Exactly. Yeah. The pilot yeah. everyone spent 10 years on, yeah. you know, and then you get the second yeah. script and you're yeah. like, really? Yeah. 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 Is there a third That's one? Where she went? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, and then asking where the show was going to go and sure. what was going to happen with my character, all of that. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, it just took, a, it took some time. And then one night, I was going to say no to it. I don't know if anyone else does this, but if you're like thinking about taking a role, I pretend that I haven't that I said no to see how that feels. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to yeah. put, do you do that? Yeah. yeah, to like put yourself through that experience a little bit and yeah. I felt terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and couldn't sleep and was super jealous of whoever yeah. did it. Yeah. <laughs> so th- that it's range of, of subjects that I mentioned, do you guys as actresses, as producers in many cases, do you feel any sort of responsibility to shed light on these topics? I mean, is that something you weigh in making your decisions? Absolutely. I mean, I think you're... I think everyone at this table is mission driven. I mean, we all have a mission to understand the greater humanity of women mm-hmm. and, and promote that. I mean, nobody's done that and more than you. And a few cool men, too. A few cool guys, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just, you know, examining the human condition and, and, and also putting a, a bigger array, a bigger, more dynamic idea of what a woman is and what her, her experience is. And I think that's, it's been such a great year. I look around the table about what are these shows and what are the topics that are coming up because of these shows. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. I've been talking about her show <laughs> ad infinitum at dinner yeah. parties because- It needs to be seen. It feels yes. it's politically possible. Yes. I mean, the but scene that's where you're the jogging yeah. and then you go in to buy a coffee it's and your really credit card doesn't thing. work anymore. And mm-hmm. she, you know, could be it feels any one possible, of us. and it feels ominous. <sighs> it's the reason why I, re- I read someplace or, or saw an interview with you saying that it's the one show that you don't think people should binge watch. Yeah, and I so agree with you because <laughs> if you binge watch it, you 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 can't. <laughs> too much. So you too won't be able to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. You won't. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it needs to be digested and kind of thought about for a second. Yes. Yeah. Go and watch something else. No, I have to take the dogs out. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god, <laughs> I did, I did the sun is shining. So so <laughs> Meditate, regrow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Meditate, regrow. <laughs> <laughs> stuff happening in You're between. You're talking about you. why nice. it's so prescient, why it's so ominous, why it's so it lands so heavily right now. Would this and some of these other projects have landed different in a different political climate? Had Hillary Clinton been our president, would it be landing and having the same impact? I mean, feud is. Yeah, similarly. I remember Ryan saying that. You know, I mean, we started shooting September before the election, mm. um, and thinking. Ryan said he was thinking, you know, well, we'll we'll make this piece about misogyny. We'll make this piece about sexism, ageism, all of this. Um, But come, you know, the beginning of the year, it might just be ironic. Uh (laughs) But of course, it wasn't. (laughs) No. Of course, no. We took a different turn, and I think it's more relevant now than it could have possibly been, you know, at any other time. Well, I don't want your help. You've always been overrated. I guess that explains my 11 Oscar nominations. The Academy doesn't reward you for your talent, for Christ's sakes, Betty. They reward you because they see how hard you sweat. They don't see the character, they see the acting. And they don't see you at all because of all your glamour makeup. Well, let me give you a tip. The answer to feeling unattractive isn't to make yourself even uglier. I don't think in this political climate that we're in that we've ever seen this much misogyny, Mm -hmm. this much sexism. And I think, you know, the fact that we have this story that's set in a particular period, but obviously Hollywood in the 1960s is just a microcosm of like this greater Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. atmosphere Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we are all... um, that we're all living through now. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So but I think I've, I know from saying to you, Ryan pretty much was a trailblazer for this. As, yeah. As much as yeah. You know, um, he sent me a text after he saw Big Little Lies, and I was like, Ryan, you you helped create what's happening now. I mean, he is literally creating roles for women yes. about women, and yeah. that is his passion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we need that we need yeah, not we just women doing do. it we need men doing it yeah and i mean the thing is you know what makes ryan i think extremely unique is and i think he's done this even more so than other women leaders mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the industry he has really made a huge effort with his half foundation mm-hmm. that 
everything, every writer, every director, mm. every crew member, mm -hmm. everybody. It has to be half and half. Yep. So, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really, it's pretty amazing. That's yeah, it is. It's really amazing. I think Ava DuVernay has done an amazing job with yep. that, too, particularly really on has. Queen Sugar, where we have all female directors. We're not even half. Mm -hmm. We're just all mm. women. Whole. So yeah. I, I think we're making some some strides. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Because what, why do you think that your show has struck such a chord? Uh, and what does its success say about our culture and where we are now? Oh, I think we all want to, like, love each other. Hmm. Like, I think we're at this point where we're like, help. <laughs> where do we start from? Love. We're made from love with mm -hmm. love to love. So, and I think that the show is mm -hmm. so relatable because... We're all going through something. It doesn't matter how tall, thin, rich, you know, poor we are, that we all want the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we all feel inadequacies, mm -hmm. which is such a shame. Mm -hmm. So it's terrible. But that we can move through that and there's discussions to be had about them. It's just, it's just what I do now. I watch the Steelers and I watch them with my dad. He sounds like a cool guy. I'd like to meet him sometime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I know it's gonna be a little creepy. Uh, this is your dad? Piggybacking onto what you said about being scared, that first scene where they're like, oh, do you wanna get half naked on the scale? Yeah. And I'm like, what? No. No, I don't. Yeah. What, what do you mean? <laughs> was it on my bra? And my under this is network. I yeah. don't know if you can do that. Yeah. Um, but it's so important because everything is about the way we look. Yeah. Um, initially, anyway. Um, so I think it's super important that people are kind of, the fear is being removed. And so when there's knowledge, there's like, oh, the fear subsides. And we're like, oh, we're just a regular person trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. How did you get to the point where you were comfortable in in doing that, I mean, standing on that scale. Well, um, <laughs> you know, it wasn't that you were comfortable. Yeah. She said she did it. She yeah. didn't say she was comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I just got to the point where I was like, this is so important for this character and for the journey that she's going on and for me mm -hmm. and for all the women who are in hair and makeup who are like, oh, I could never do that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but why? Yeah. Like, why are we so judged on the way we look when it's just the vehicle, mm -hmm. it's just like the package that we're in? Mm -hmm. And it ebbs and flows and it changes and all that jazz. Um, <laughs> but I, I just felt it was really important. And when other women who were like, oh, my God, I know what it meant to, like, take off the earrings. I'm like, every ounce counts, girl. <laughs> you know, like, We've all yes. done it. Yes. Stand on one foot. Right? Yeah. And then <laughs> lean to the side. Yes. Uh, I was just doing this the other day yeah. where I thought, hands down, <laughs> an extra yeah. five, uh, 0.5, hands up. <laughs> right. You lose a half a pound. Hands like, down. Do I hold the breath? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Yeah. I think there's all kind of tricks in the trade. But, um, yeah, I was, it wasn't. It was more about everyone else and not about me. And I think as actors, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, we're telling a story. Mm -hmm. Let me separate this from who I am. And then also know that whatever anybody thinks about me is not my business. Yeah. And it's their perception, is their reality. And I'm like, I'm just going to do it. And it's my job. And it's important. It needs to be seen. And so many women who are like, I've never seen my body shape on TV. I'm mm. like, I know. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think it was really important, and that kind of trumped, you know, my my ego and mm -hmm. my feelings. So That's wonderful. I love that. Nicole, uh, shedding the light that you did uh, on, on Big Little Lies with domestic abuse and what the sort of layers of that, because it on its face of it was something much messier than, than we initially thought. What was that preparation process for you? And also, what were the conversations between you uh, and Jean-Marc, between you and Alexander Skarsgård, between you and, and, and Reese? Reese and I talked about everything else pretty much, didn't we? <laughs> and then we would dip in there for about, I mean, so much of when we were all working together. 95%. I remember, you were shooting, I remember the first time you were shooting and I was so nervous. I was like sitting in my trailer like, mm. oh, they're doing Head and she was, yeah. and I like went in your trail. I was like, it's okay, because I'm like, so worried about you. Mm. And she was so vulnerable in her underwear. And yeah, um, I felt my way through the character. That would be how I, I mean, I sort of, it was beautifully written initially in the novel, mm -hmm. and then it was written by David, and then I was allowed to um, bring some things to it what did as you well. Bring to it? Um, there were certain things that I would call David and say, it's important that you know um, that I gave up my career. 
mm-hmm. that I moved there for him. When he says that I don't love him, it's important that I say, but I gave up this and this and this and this and this. Mm. Isn't that enough to show you how much I love you? So that you see the constant push-pull of the relationship and the desire for him to um, realise how much I love him, Mm -hmm. which is, to me, an interesting um, motivation. I mean, that that is the motivation of her the whole time, is to say, look look what I will do... What else can I do? ..to keep this Mm -hmm. relationship. We get angry. We fight and we... We then have this crazy, angry sex. (sighs) And then we make up and it's it's all better. And and we have this dirty secret. John Mark is the sort of director that just shoots the rehearsal, shoots everything keeps going and um, walks away and goes, well, oh, good. Yeah. And that's it, you know, there's not much. Oh. It doesn't seem to cover a lot or anything. It seems like he really just kind of sits in something. He moves the camera in because he shoots as well and yeah. the real heavy of shooting and he'll, I mean, Reese knows because she's worked with him twice, but yeah. it's a fantastic way to do a performance like this because sure. you're just in it and particularly for, this, for the sex scenes in terms of a lot of finding those... Um, we, you know, you you want a you want a director who just gets in there and allows it to play out, and then and things happen that are very surprising. Yeah. I know. Can and you some of it ends up you on the like cutting room floor. And stop, stop and then go to the close up, and then stop and go to the medium shot. Yeah, it's and not that. Those scenes. He doesn't yeah. make you do that. He doesn't that. do that. Elizabeth, in, in your case, I mean, these are also these are not typical sex scenes. Mm. It, it's rape. Yeah. For you. How do you, again, how do you get into that headspace? How do you feel comfortable? What are those conversations you were having? Well, I mean, quite simply, I just sort of thought, what would one do in this situation, you know, which sounds sort of so uh, over simple, perhaps, but I just was like, if you were being assaulted, sexually assaulted on a regular basis and you knew there was nothing you could do about it, what would you do? You know, there you can, there's no escape and you can't fight back. And so I thought, well, she would probably try not to be there. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. She said, Hold my name, Bila. How else do you deal with such a thing if you don't go somewhere else? You can't be there. You can't experience it. That you you wouldn't make it, you know? So, which happens to women in that mm. world. They don't make it. So I just thought, okay, well, I just have to go somewhere else. And that's what I was trying to do, was just show that she wasn't there. And in the shooting of it, we were really, it was really important for us to, to have it be extremely clinical, mechanical. Uh, there's nothing sexual remotely about it, hmm. you know? And that was really important to show it exactly for, for what it should be, you know? And that no one is enjoying this, that hmm. all three parties are in a terrible place. Yeah, and when they yell, so yeah, 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 even the yeah. man who can't. Yeah, it's, it's like, yes. it's, it's terrible. And when, yell, when they would yell, cut. What would happen? I mean, you know how these things are, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you are there. A couple with, of jokes. Exactly. Yes, a couple yes. of, like, <laughs> like lame. Exa- yes. Exactly. <laughs> you all right down there? You good? Yeah. All right, great. You're doing great. <laughs> you yeah, know, I mean. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, everyone's in an awkward position. Uh-huh. You know, there's usually, like, am I hurting you? Like, that kind of thing. And then you do it again. <laughs> and there's, you know, 65 people watching. And, you know, it's very, it's not as, I think, dramatic as anyone sort of thinks it might be. Yeah. (laughs) Except I remember lying on in the last episode when on the floor and I remember being in my underwear and having been really sort of thrown around and I just lay on the floor. I couldn't get up. I just Mm. didn't want to get up. And I remember Jean-Marc coming over and putting a towel over me in between the takes Mm. because I was just like, I don't even... Too exposed? I just felt completely humiliated and devastated and I was just like, I don't want 
and angry inside. Mm. It was a very, and Reese knows this, I went home and I put, threw a rock through a glass door. No, we were staying at a hotel. I was staying and at a hotel. And she called me and she goes, I've just done the craziest thing. I've thrown I a get rock. Home from, she got home from work and she yeah. had one of these horrible scenes. And she goes, I, I couldn't get into my hotel room, so I threw a rock through the Through window. the glass she goes, door. I don't do stuff like <laughs> wow. that. And no, then and I got another one. You're And threw it through. Yeah. <laughs> so I was obviously holding all that rage mm -hmm, at yeah. what had been done, and that was, I've well, not had always, that. Mm. Yeah, that's always the amazing thing about being an actor is, and is that your body doesn't understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's make-believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, no. exactly. That this is just, so that everything is internalized in that way, that rage, that sorrow, yeah. grief, whatever. And it's not like you just... I mean, it, it, it really is. It gets, seeps into the marrow of your bones mm -hmm. and every molecule is actually believing that this is happening. Mm. And no matter what the mind is telling it, it's, yeah, everything exactly. is internalized. Mm -hmm. Our poor so partners she, and children. Yeah. I think, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I apologize to my husband all the time. <laughs> isn't it important, I mean, as I said, I'm the least experienced. You've done more episodes. Okay, uh, yeah. It's on the same. It's on the same. Least experience. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, awesome. This happened to me once uh, when I was doing The Butler, where mm. I had a scene where uh, my son had died, and I'd gotten myself to the point where you know mm. I'm ready to just you know let it all go. Mm. And the director Lee Daniel said, "No, nope, I don't want her to do that. I don't want her throwing herself all over the ca casket. So I don't late. want that. Yeah, so <laughs> late. I don't want her doing all that. I just wanted to hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and so." I didn't release it. I left. I left that scene, oh got on a plane, <laughs> went to interview somebody else, and was holding, all, just as you were saying, Jessica. So when did it come holding out? Holding all of that energy. And uh, in the middle of an interview, I, th <gasps> I thought it was going to burst into tears mm -hmm. just in the middle of somebody, you know, huh. mm. talking about something that was not even related to me bursting into uh -huh. tears. And I was like, I thought I felt a little cuckoo. Uh -huh. uh, and I realized it's yeah. because I didn't go through the process of But even if you go through the process, you're still a little still, cuckoo, yeah. I think. Still it's a little like, cuckoo? Yeah, because I think you, you carry this stuff around with you, you know, whatever it is, whatever mm. insult, whatever assault, whatever yeah. memory, you know, all these things that you have, like, been, like, delving into for your, you know, for to your find character. The space. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then it's all still there, mm -hmm. and yeah. it, it manifests itself in very odd times, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, you can be just walking down the street and suddenly, like, this horrible grief will come mm. over you huh. or this, yeah, this kind of, I don't know, sorrow, and mm. you don't know what it is. You know, mm. you look around, you don't know... But it is. It's the residue of all these emotions mm -hmm. that you've been dealing with for <laughs> yeah, last you couple of days, up months, months, years. I was very lucky like that the on our show, because there were so many women on our show, and I have never had this experience ever in my life, but remember we were shooting the finale, mm. and we were on our seventh day of night shoots, and I was losing my mind. Mm. And, <laughs> and they kept saying, okay, we're going to do the scene where you have the breakdown, and you tell Shailene that you've cheated on your husband. And they're like, but we're not going to do it today. Uh, we ran out of time. We're going to do it tomorrow. Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, so it'd be no. right there primed, right? <laughs> by day seven, yeah. we're yeah. getting prepared so and not ever using mm. it. And then, we came in and we had to do the titles. He out of nowhere told us to do the title sequence. I just couldn't do it. And <laughs> they called us to set mm. and they said, no, 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 just one more minute. I started to scream. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and all the girls, instead, and I've never screamed like this, like howling, like I need to get this out. Mm. And instead of having this feeling like, oh my God, what did I just do? Yeah. All the women like came on and go, Girl, I have so been there. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is oh, such nice. And I'm like, she's ready to shoot. She's, she's, she's perfect. She's <laughs> in exactly the right spot. Goes, she goes, she's, she's ready. We need to shoot right now. Right now. Like, she's there. Like, she's there. She's poor. And she's like, I feel you. <laughs> Violence is something that you have, it's been a theme in your work dating back to Color Purple. Um, but, but in this, curious what draws you to those types of stories? Because I keep trying to share with the world what it means not just to be sexually violated, but what it means to um, have someone who's a predator 
in your own space, in your own environment, and to be preyed upon. Um, just as Reese was saying earlier, I think we're all about sharing the story that is going to uh, raise consciousness on any level. And so all of us are about the work for the work's sake, but also what is underneath that, that, mm. that resonates with people in a way that they can be moved or inspired. And I think you've said that it, it's something obviously you tackled on your talk show. I tried to do it for many years. I did 127 interviews with either victims of molestation, sexual abuse, uh, sexual violence, or the molesters, rapists themselves, in one form or another. And I, I, at the end of the show, said it's the one thing, one message I think I failed at um, allowing people to see the depth of the pain, because everybody um, looks at the act itself, particularly when it comes to sexual molestation, and they want to know, was there penetration or not penetration? Or, mm -hmm. And with girls, you will find this even in the courts. Uh, when I was trying to get a pill passed to change all of this, uh, one of the lawyers said to me, you are a 13-year-old girl who's raped is gonna have a much harder time in trial than a 13-year-old boy because there's something about the country that feels that being sodomized mm -hmm. is unnatural. But at some point, if you're a 13-year-old girl, eventually you're gonna have sex. Hmm. And so people, the jury, always, mm. because there are always so many people in the jury who've also been through the same thing, they think, oh, she'll get over it. Hmm. But if it's a boy, they you know, generally feel differently. Wow. So, uh, you know, I tried and tried and tried and tried. And so now I'm doing it through um, our storyline in Greenleaf. I try to do it with the, the subjects that I choose, the books that I choose, mm. always trying to let people see the light of that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes art is a way that sort of removes you in yes. a certain capacity. I thought Shailene's, uh, Shailene Woodley's storyline where yes. she also is seeing herself from a different perspective mm -hmm. um, in Big Little Lies, I thought really helped sort of understand what the emotional experience, but then yes. you see the fallout. I mean, That's she's right. become obsessed with finding her rapist mm -hmm. and homicidal even mm -hmm. and self-harming and, mm. um, and constantly trying to reckon it. But I do think sometimes art gives you an opportunity to... Um, I think it's actually the best opportunity for people to see themselves. Yeah. The over and under in this town is about 150,000. I work in community theater, 20 hours a week, so I'm definitely an under. What do you do? Oh, just bookkeeping, so most definitely an under too. <laughs> when I grow up, I'm gonna run a massive label. Do you have plans? No. He's a little nervous. Relax, he's walking in with Chloe. That's like walking in with the golden ticket. <laughs> I'll never forget an interview I did with Rain Wilson um, maybe five, six years ago, who said there really is no difference between art and prayer. Mm -hmm. So I feel that when we um, offer ourselves mm -hmm. through the process of our work, it's like giving this prayer to the world. Minnie Driver recently said, um, that women also often are a little bit nervous about playing unlikable characters in a way that men are not, that they are simply mm. anti-heroes. Is that something, I mean, many at this table are pl playing what, what could be seen, at least on the paper, as unlikable characters. Is that something that ever gives you pause? <laughs> I enjoy it. No, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. And how important is it to make them empathetic in that process? Well, what is likable and unlikable? I don't I was know, gonna like say, good yeah. or bad. I mean, the thing I really enjoy about the evolution of, of particularly television, is that we have the opportunity to show that uh, the entire spectrum of human emotion that women have. Mm -hmm. We aren't just the wives and the girlfriends. Mm -hmm. We are actually living, breathing people who have our insecurities, our great relationships with your brother in that show is mm -hmm. amazing. And how <laughs> you've given your life to your brother because you don't want to be vulnerable in a romantic relationship is just so I moving. Don't make me cry. <laughs> it's so it's moving. So good. <laughs> and then he takes you for granted all the time. Mm -hmm. But like that's a different relationship than I've ever seen on film. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. I've never seen that. But in, in your case, yeah. Uh, you like, added something that she, wasn't in the book about your character that on the face of it would, would make you that much more unlikable, which is the adultery piece of your storyline. Right. And that was something, presumably, as a producer on the show as well, that was important to you. So how, A, why, and B, 
how do you then turn that into something that is layered and is empathetic? Well, I think a big theme of the show is shame and how, what, what we feel shamed about and how do we resolve that. And you think about these women that are mm -hmm. so connected and we're very best friends and we never tell each other our true shame. Mm -hmm. And then no. it just is stays that buried. Which is at the root of all the abuse, you know? Yeah. Everybody thinks that it's about the act itself, but mm -hmm. it's about the shame mm -hmm. that you carry mm -hmm. and what, how that shame then shapes you. And that's what was so wonderful about Big Little Lies is that you get to see how the shame has shaped everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when it's gone, yeah. and the layers it's gone. Yeah, and, the layers, and they are yeah. free. Yeah. And they will forever be connected because of this idea that they finally were able to let it go. Mm -hmm. Can we give a shout out to the set designers? I just wanted I to know. live in those houses. Oh, man. I wanted to live in the houses. And I live in a pretty good house. And I live in a pretty good house. But even the apartment. I just wanted to live in the houses. I don't know. <laughs> pretty, so I pretty, that pretty that was spectacular. Like, I like that the humanity of it, I think, is what, when you talk about a, a likable or unlikable, it's more just finding the, hum, humanity. the humanity of, mm -hmm. the, of the character. Yeah. Because maybe there's doing terrible things, we've all behaved badly, but finding the, um, the reasons for it. It's what, when I went to Jessica and I just saw her before, I said, I wanna to talk to you about all of that because suddenly um, Joan is human, yeah. where she yes. hadn't been human mm -hmm. in terms of the way she was depicted in the press a lot of times because she was dominated by basically the bad mother um, <laughs> label, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you all yeah. wanted to talk about it, but that was sort of, which is devastating from the amount of work that she did, And but it's such a complicated life. And yeah. so, but the humanity of the character is what, um, I responded to in the performance. Yeah, sure. Same. As a working actress who has had the career that you've had, how important was it when you were inhabiting this character to make her empathetic, to make her someone that in many ways you are rooting for? Well, I'd never thought in those terms, mm -hmm. really, to tell you the truth. I didn't think I have to make Joan Crawford empathetic or I have no. to make her understandable or any of that stuff. That was like... <laughs> That's way too intellectual for my, <laughs> my simple yeah. approach yeah. to working. Mm. Um, no, really what I did was go back to the source, and it was through all of the biographies, and all of her interviews, everything, and determine where this woman came from. This just devastating poverty in San Antonio, Texas, a mother who never wanted her, who didn't love her, who abused her, a father who abandoned her. So right away as a child, you've got like huge issues. And then at the age of 11, you know, she enters into a sexual relationship with her stepfather. But what became really interesting to me was how she perceived it. Mm -hmm. You know, this thing of like, was the first time she ever felt loved. So, you know, the distortion and mm -hmm. the contradictions and all of that, that became the basis for where I jumped in with this character. And the fact that she struggled her whole life to rid herself of Lucille Lassure, created Joan Crawford at great expense, um, learn to walk, to gesture, to talk, to act as a barrier to who she was. Sure. And that to me became the emotional core of the character. And everything that she did radiated from that. Mm. So one of the things in watching the show is you're sort of horrified that this is the Hollywood system and this is how women are treated in that. Uh, then there's another layer of horrifying because you realized how little has, has changed. Yeah. A, as you're playing this, were you thinking how little has changed? And B, did you reach a conclusion? When we were doing it, it was never, again, it was never with that thought of, oh, we're doing, you know, a story that's still relevant today. In playing Crawford, and I know Susan in playing Davis, the idea that these women, by their mid-50s, were done. Mm -hmm. the, the industry was finished with them. And... I think to a certain degree, that still is the case. And I think what's happened in the world of television, television has kind of stepped into that void that's left when your film career begins to really 
thin out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the great middle ground. Yeah, yeah yes. it's the middle ground now. And you can It also do... reaches far. I mean, we both said that. And I've I would I've turned down films to do television mm -hmm. because I love the seven hours yeah. of exploring yeah, a character. Great. And it's I great. would say the and it reaches more people. Don't want don't want that deficit. The no. audience wants to see these. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the, the film industry that's, you know, it got rid of the so 30, much money to make the films, certainly. to market them, to get them out there. That you, they the do have to be see events all ages, or superhero all movies. Or, all cultures. Well, I think the audience them. responded to This Is Us because they, like, they were thinking about This Is Us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The audience thought, that, you know, I think you asked the question, it's on network, uh, Chrissy, why do people respond mm -hmm. that way? Because you watch that series and you can find yourself in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're rooting for everybody in it. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, perfect title, This Is Us. <laughs> what do you think? I, I like to say that I had a hand in it. Okay. <laughs> he had a bit of a contest. Perfect title. Right? Well, he had a bit of a contest, and Dan was like, oh, we'll give an iPad to whoever, like, names the show. And I tell, I think my title was like, This Is Me and You Are. So, something <laughs> along the lines. I like to say that I You named, named it. Yeah. You did. I'm, we'll for the record, right I like to say that I named it. <laughs> we'll give it to you. Yeah. I did not. But, um, but it is. Because it you is. can see yourself in weight issues, paternity, ageism, all that stuff. Yeah. Which Brothers, pieces? Sisters, Were pieces? Siblings, yes. everything. Yeah. I know Sterling has said that he you know, use some of his own personal experiences as being a black man, as being a father, uh, to infuse into the character, mm -hmm. his character. What from your own experiences have you used in crafting this character? Oh, so much. Um, I think we use what we know, and so that's why you most likely get cast in a role, because you're like, oh, she, this, is, this is a good fit. Um, I mean, I've had people give me all kinds of looks on airplanes when they know that I'm going to be coming to sit by them. Um, even to this day, who, I was like, sir, <laughs> sir. We're in first class. Like, you got some room. Um, but okay, those are, those are his issues. They're not yep. mine. If you want to move, boo, just move. I'm like, it's fine. Can we switch? Um, and, you know, just discrimination mm -hmm. because it's such a visual issue. Um, and even in the, the second episode when we went to the Hollywood party, mm -hmm. Toby, uh, Kevin, and Kate went to the party, and you're like, half of me is like, yeah, I'm good. I could go anywhere. I love people. Great. I'll get along with them. And half of them was like, oh, half of me is like, um, are they looking at me? Should I not have worn this? Is my skirt too short? Like, what's going on? And I, I don't know. I think even just from a human perspective, we all can relate to that. But, um, you know, always being like the bigger girl of my friends or the bigger girl in auditions and um, pretty much almost every scene, I'm like, oh, I've experienced something to that effect, mm. so. And that's probably why it's working, because it is, in well, fact, oh, yeah. based on true yeah. experience. Speaking of this journey that you've been on in the last year, I think you said that there was 81 you got cents it. 81 in your cents. bank account? People have said 87 cents. I'm no. like, don't <laughs> give me that extra six cents. <laughs> what gave you the confidence to keep going? Was was there a oh. person, a, a an incident that said, you know what, this is worth it, I'm going to I don't Absolutely. know if there was a particular incident, but my mom did say, I called her and I was like, it was just after Horror Story. And there was a whole year that nothing happened. I was like, I thought it was a good jumping off point. <laughs> Nobody's interested? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> what do I do now? Do I go back and teach preschool in Gainesville, Florida? And my mom's like, you can either be miserable in Los Angeles pursuing your dream, or you can be miserable in Gainesville, Florida. Um, so there was that whole year that I was on unemployment. I had one audition that whole year. And when I auditioned for the show, I had, literally had 81 cents in my bank account. People oh, were like, I wow. don't believe you. And I was a talent agent for nine years because I had to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And so my clients would like text me and they're like, Chris, are you lying? What? And I'm like, uh-huh. They're like, I can't believe I complained about not being able to get a pedicure. I'm like, mm-hmm. I had 81 cents. I couldn't even get gas. My life has completely changed. I can get gas now. So that's always most good. importantly. Yeah, most importantly, I am mobile. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 So, what is Hollywood like to sort of lock people into lanes? And there's a certain thing that they want from you, a role that they sort of expect from you. What do you find the thing that that role is for you? The types of projects you are uh, pursued for, and conversely, are there roles that you're you're not getting but you really feel like you'd be great at, or at least you'd like to give it a shot? Hmm. I don't really have an experience where there's so many roles out there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Agreed. we created the show we, for I that reason. I, I yeah, started a production was... company five years ago because yeah. I was looking at 
maybe the worst script I've ever read in my entire life. And it had two parts for women. And I was like, I called my agent. I said, this is such a terrible script. They said, well, seven women want it. So you're the only one Whoa. who's not vying for the part. Wow. Do you believe that? Thought, Do you feel like women actually want it, or was it just there was nothing they else? They were looking for work. Yeah. Yeah. They had 81 cents. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, might it wasn't even, me. It yeah. might, <laughs> they weren't calling me. <laughs> economics either. It's like they wanted to work. Yeah. We yes. all want to work. Yeah. We, we want to work. We want to work. We want to feel. We want to do what we do yeah. well. And I thought, God, if this is what we've come to, I have to get busy. Because mm. you can either complain about a problem or you can be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I gotta do something. So when you say things, uh, you know, things have changed because we live in a world where we can create what we want. Mm -hmm. You, If it isn't there, it's like Toni Morrison said she wrote the book, she started writing books that she wanted to read herself. Yeah. We can now create works that we want to participate in ourselves. And, either be in them ourselves or offer them to other women to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's, that's the great thing about what's changed. You don't like what's out there? Change it. Yeah. And there's power in numbers. I mean, yeah. I always say, if I'd gone in with the book, Big Little Lies, you probably, I don't think I would have gotten a mate, but Reese and I went in and we went, no, this is what we want. This is how we want to do it. This I think we just got it got going faster. <laughs> but it was... Two women calling you constantly. Yeah. Going, What's going on? <laughs> How are you this? Come on, make it work. But it was amazing, the and power we of that and joining the forces sure. together and going, let's do it together. And it was fast because we make decisions fast and we were like... And then able to go call friends, mm -hmm. like... Reese is like, oh yeah, no, Laura will do this. We'll get Laura. Laura's going to do it. Then we, oh and my Laura gosh, during cards Shailene. She called Shay. So That's it was so like, cool. suddenly the opportunities were not just ours, but they're for our friends Made it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. But how, what a like an amazing feeling to be able, as you've oh, done so mm -hmm. many times, you to be able to call somebody yeah. and give somebody an amazing piece of material and say, would you want to do this? And it was it was a fantastic experience. Incredible feeling mm -hmm. to to be able to go. We did this, still kind of go, wow, <laughs> yes. did we do so it? Because cool. that's. And now you may be doing more of it. I we think. had a little meeting, we, we had, had a dressing room <laughs> in our robes. <laughs> yeah. we, we have a you plan of action. You with the story? <gasps> I think so. Yeah, and we have huh. other stories. What, stories and we're, what, what oh, aspects yeah. have, have you not yet more. explored that you'd love to explore? I characters who die at the end, then you definitely are <laughs> sure that you're, you're, out. Out. you're out. But that's not the way the business works. They, they, they want more. Yeah. Something that works, you want more. Well, those are so very prevalent. I mean, these women are strong women. They're interesting storylines. I said to Reese, the story Storylines, yeah, there's an end to that, but there's not an end to their lives. I yeah. mean, yeah, if you're looking at that, women in the world now, there's a chapter now, of the book that we didn't even tackle. I love that yeah. each of the women as well is there's no villain, there's no whore, there's no like angel. Like each of them is so human mm. and has good and bad sides mm. and is so complicated. Mm. You know, I just didn't feel like any of them were any sort of archetype at all. They were all just really individual and interesting, you know, which is a testament to the writing, but also a testament to your guys' performances. Yeah. Elizabeth, how much when you were assessing what choices to make next after Mad Men, how much was that character sort of playing into the decision-making process? I would say I'm not precious about that kind of thing at all. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily play like a copywriter in the 60s, maybe, anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the character, I don't try to, oh, this is too similar, this, I don't really try to do that. I mean, with like, with Top of the Lake, like, that was something that came my way and I was so grateful to have it and I never thought I would get it. I was like, oh, this is gonna be so good for whoever does it. <laughs> She was so amazing. She's going to do such a good job. I didn't think I was going to get it. Like, I wasn't seeking out something that was really different from Peggy or anything. And then with Handmaids, I mean, it just, it came my way. And it was one of those things that, like I said, I, I couldn't not do in the end. So I, I don't, I look for good writing. I look for good writing and people that are better than me to work with mm -hmm. so that I can try to be better and try to get better. And, you know, that's it. I don't try to, you know, find something that, I don't plan it like that, I guess. I don't think about it like that. A career that. plan. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I don't know strategies. Do I, I want to know, what do you do to shake it? I mean, obviously, filming, <laughs> you don't film it all at the same time. It's all put together mm -hmm. afterwards. But do you have to do something to shake it off at the end of the day? I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I def There's usually a cocktail involved. Tequila. <laughs> yes. Tequila. I believe in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
There's usually I believe a, in the martini exactly, shot as a real thing. Exactly. I take it very literally, the martini <laughs> shot. Um, but no, for me, it's I, I'm pretty good at shedding it, I think, maybe because I have to, because some of the material I do is is so dark. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm good at it. I'm good at shedding it. I, I, I like to, you know, when you're working, especially if you're working in something a lot, it's quite lonely. You mm. sort of you get up and you go to work and you go home and you shower and you eat your little dinner by yourself and you watch <laughs> This Is Us. And, <laughs> and, you know, you try to be normal for a second and think about something else and, you know, just kind of have a two, three hours and then you go to bed and you get a few hours sleep and you get back up and do it again. So for me, it's, it's not difficult to shake it, but I suppose I have to do it in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. That is your routine. shaking. You exactly. have a routine to shake it. I have my routine to shake yeah, it. That starts with the martini That shot. starts yeah. with the Moscow Mule. <laughs> you are weighing decisions, weighing what to do, and when do you do it for your network versus when do you do this movie for HBO? Well, I, we had been working on this project with HBO for quite some time, so it was clear that that was going to be for HBO. And um, the audience for OWN is a beautifully curated audience, and I get a sense of what they will respond to, so that therefore Greenleaf and uh, when Ava and I sat down to think about what would be a great series, I had just finished uh, reading the book Queen Sugar. And on my front porch, we came up with this idea of doing that wonderful series. And so, When do you make the decision of, I'm going to act in this? And, um, and what, what are you weighing in that process? I'm weighing how much time is it something I feel like I want to give myself over to. I'm weighing what's it going to take, re require for me to do it. And in the end, what will the message ultimately be? Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I at first thought that I had my ideas about two other actresses who should have played that role, and HBO didn't agree with me, and so... <laughs> instead yeah. of you. Instead, instead Did of Did they me. have to then convince you to this yeah. is... Yeah. Linda Motto came up to visit me, and we had a long talk, and I said, I'll pray on it. And uh, I eventually said yes because I wanted to work with George Wolfe. Mm -hmm. And it was worth the experience. Hmm. Anything else when I mean, we talked about the sort of being put in a lane and you said you've created um, these opportunities for you. But what we didn't say is what are the things that you have wanted to do but you ha it, it haven't yet been available or you haven't been able to get done? What, what are the roles you'd love to do, the types of projects you'd love to do that we have not yet seen? Well, we need to find Elizabeth a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new mission. Thank you. Ooh, something yeah. a little lighter. Let's go Mindy. Please. Yeah. Let's go Mindy Gale. Yeah. <laughs> would that be appealing to you? Is that something, I mean, would you like to do? Yeah, it? it's what I actually love to watch, honestly. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've seen, I, I watch a lot of television. I watch everything. Um, so I've seen all the drama, but and I actually And you're funny in Mad Men. Thank I mean, you. you had great comedic moments. Mad Men was really funny sometimes. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm already thinking about it in my yeah, head. Yeah, like, yeah. I got a um, I, so I love comedy. I love watching it. And for, for me, I love, I think, that sweet spot between comedy and drama, where, which isn't necessarily a big deal. I say, there's absolutely none of that. Yeah, the yeah, current yeah, project yeah. you were doing. That would be weird. But it's that sort of... Is like, there ever going to be any comedy in <laughs> Mad Men? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a light moment. Yeah. Of, no. Season light two. Season? Very, very, very dark comedy. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a smile. There's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little, like, a few things here and there, but it's pretty dark. Uh, yeah. But no, I love things like, you know, actually like all of these projects where there is that sort of line between drama and comedy, where, it, which I find very just truthful of life. You know, it's mm. not necessarily either one. Yeah. Actually, I like that. That's what I like to watch. So let's find something like that. <laughs> Chris, what would you love to do? Yeah, but I mean, there, right there is sitting the, the I mean, I've, and I've always said this and I watched her on the set and to be able to mix that comedy and drama yeah. That is a high wire act. Yeah. And she and Laura together, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like, I, you know, you watch things and you go, I, can't, yeah. I cannot do that. Yeah. And I watching her do true. it, <laughs> yeah. but I couldn't. Today She's like, very, yeah. very funny. But so different to, I mean, it was just, 
I, I loved being able to watch it yeah. and and soak it up yeah. because and I would laugh yep. so much of the stuff. I did that most we had. of it just to make you she laugh. She would make you laugh, <laughs> and I would laugh. It was a scene where I had like, to say vulgar really things, genuine. and I literally was just like thinking, "What will yeah. what will really make Nicole cringe?" <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad show. Amazing. The, that's yeah, the, right. the after show <laughs> yeah. that I would like to see next time. What's the role that you, the type of role, the type of project that you'd love to be approached for, but have not? Uh, you know, comedy did. was really kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess they're like, oh, it's a sad big girl. Like, we better put her in some drama. I'm kidding. Um, but I, if you don't See, laugh, if you don't you laugh, you'll cry. And I would love to do comedy, but I'd also love to do a project that's not about weight. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, oh, it's just a, a woman who happens to be going for a job interview or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, slowly but surely it'll happen. But I do love comedy. But I do love that that line, that high wire act that you're like, am I supposed to laugh? Or is this like, mm -hmm. what? Oh my god! Oh my god! This is hilarious, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah I think comedy. Huh. Yeah, not anything specific, but is not, nothing. I don't. Do? I don't have any desire for myself, but I'm on to creating the next great series for for my network, and uh, with Mara Brooke Kill, we're going to do a a dramedy, comedy drama. Um, Elizabeth Savale. I'm in. <laughs> No, I just meant to watch. Yeah. I'm sure I'd love yeah. to be in it, but and, I'll definitely um, be watching. I'm excited about that. <laughs> I love that. All right, we're going to end with some lighter questions here. What did you want to be when you were five years old? The first female president of the United States of America. Oh. <laughs> I'm Still not possible. Yes. I remember <laughs> saying it. I remember <clears throat> saying it, and I remember being in kindergarten in um, Nashville, Tennessee, and saying it, and I had a female teacher, and some of the boys laughed, and she said, I'll be the first one to vote for you. Oh, oh, nice. I still remember it. It's a great that's teacher. Amazing. So yeah. she sees what a great this. teacher. Yes. Yes. She was awesome. At five years old, I just wanted to be a teacher. By the time I hit the fourth grade, it was definitely a fourth grade teacher because of Mrs. Duncan, my fourth grade teacher. Mm. Yes. Mm. You always grade. remember the people who yeah. see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the fourth grade teacher, Miss Rollo, was my. Uh, I wanted to be a marine biologist because I cool. thought that you just swim with dolphins. <laughs> no, they're scientists. Uh. <laughs> so they're like, I'll just be a dolphin trainer. And they're like, what do they do to the, these animals? I'm like, I don't know. I no. can't. Maybe I could pretend to like protect the dolphins in a movie. And so, yeah. <laughs> my, that's my process. <laughs> Astronaut. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because I'd lie on my back and look at the stars and be like, oh, I want to go out there. Hmm. I still would love to be able to do that. Will you, would you do it if space travel? You could do it if space travel. Go? go ahead. Yeah. Uh, would you go? Elon's coming. I, don't know. I mean, I would love to, yeah. But I, I almost like, I can take myself out there now. <laughs> yeah. To get really, really. <laughs> like an astral travel. Yeah. <laughs> astral travel. <laughs> what did you want to do when you were a kid? I don't think I wanted to do anything. <laughs> just be a kid? I just was, yeah. I mean, I was just getting through the day, kind yeah. of, you know. Sure. Whatever that meant. Yeah. <laughs> Playing, make-believe, a walking, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had no aspirations. <laughs> what about you? Oh, this is so lame after all these cool ones. I wanted to be an actor or a dancer. I did mm. ballet for many years as well. Um, so I wasn't sure which uh, at five. I hadn't made that choice yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I did. I wanted to be an actor. I really liked pretending, and I had a huge imagination. Huh. Uh, so there was always something happening, you know, with costumes, and I always mm. was planting gardens that didn't exist, <laughs> <laughs> riding my horse that was invisible. Um, <laughs> did you know at that <laughs> time? Huh? Did you know at that time that that translated into acting? Because I used to do that too. Right. I mean, for like. Like, like an entire day, I would carry yes. on like conversations. Yes. And I'd play different characters and I'd create these things and I'd be so deep inside that. But I had no idea at the time that I that's what either. it was. Yeah, I didn't either. I, I mean, even though I wanted to be an actor, I sort of didn't think that, I didn't know that they were the same thing until many years later. Yeah. Then I was like, oh yeah, I guess I did really always like it. What TV character, film character, book character do you, do you most identify with? Do you most identify with? <laughs> or did you most identify questions. with? These are not fun, these are tough. <laughs> supposed to be fun. Well, <laughs> beyond that, I wanted to put out there, though, because we'd never dealt with it. When you say, oh, the idea of all the characters and, and as, I mean, the other thing is being a woman, and some of us here have children, some of us don't, but, boy, any relationship or children, you have so much to, there's so many things I would want to do, but so much of my life is how do I balance that? Because... Mm. 
we're in a position of, I, if I have my fantasy life, there's so many roles and places and things I want to do. I'm now at a point where I have to go, I can't what's that going to cost me? Yeah. yeah. And what's that going to cost the people I love? And as yeah. you said, leaving San, I want to, do I want to leave now to do this? But, right. you know, so much. And men don't really, I mean, they have that, but they don't have it in the same way well, that we have it. Well, they come back and they're a hero. Yeah, well, and they're we allowed go away to and come go. Back and we've abandoned our children. We have to. We don't get <laughs> the choices yeah. as much with <laughs> our careers and our lives because a lot of it is we have to be there to take care of everything. Still, oh, I do, and so a lot of my fantasy life is I can go and read a play, and I've done it. Mm. I just, I then don't have to go and actually do it because I've, mm. I've done the play. I've done it in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I remember and that's time. what I realised at this stage of my life. That's going to have to be enough because yeah. there's only limited time. Can you change that? I mean, you do talk about what happens, but is there a way to, to change that paradigm? No, I mean, you're, that's a choice you're no. making. Like, I was talking to this very famous actor. I said, how did you prepare for this role? I said, well, I went into the woods mm. yeah. for three weeks. And, oh. and the person <laughs> has a lot of kids and is married. And he went into the woods for three weeks. No one spoke. I didn't talk to anybody. And I thought, he's like, you did the same thing for a while, right? I was like... Uh, no. <laughs> I went away for yeah. three weeks and no one could call me. Everybody would have had a mental breakdown. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I got really... on a plane and within 24 hours I was shooting wow. and I had no prep time. I wish I had more prep time. Like, I love the preparation. I love watching and reading and mm -hmm. digging deep. The nerdy the, 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 the social anthropology <laughs> aspect of it. I love, yeah, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I wish I had more time to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the roles are going to have to just be played in our heads, <laughs> <laughs> or a table read. Because there's not enough time. There is because enough. once you, once there really you, isn't. yeah, once you have responsibilities, you start to realize um, that there's a limited amount of energy and time that we all have, and so you choose based upon what's the most mm -hmm. meaningful for you. Mm -hmm. You learn to prioritize better, I think. But right? I find that I mean, if we're speaking about regrets, which you know, I. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on. See, you tried to give us light stuff. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't light. do it. Said, I love that. We couldn't go there. This I is the drama actress. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Bring you should on. ask that of, like, you know, comedy. But <laughs> I found, I mean, in relation to children, that the parts that I turned down, I never regretted because because the choice was, do I want to leave home now? Mm -hmm. Do I want to? And my kids were great because, I mean, you all know, you, you pack them up like a little troop of gypsies <laughs> with the dogs and the, like, yeah. you know, and you find another school and you find classes and you do all that when you get to location and you don't have time to do any prep because you're trying to find them art classes yeah. and you're trying to find them. Mm -hmm. Camp. <laughs> and they have strep throat and you're up at night. Yeah, <laughs> but the only thing that I ever have regretted is saying yes to a film. Mm -hmm. huh. And that time, that has taken me away from my children. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that too. Mm -hmm. I wish it had been... I wish I had said no. Mm -hmm. I did I've a movie definitely. every time I was pregnant, and I wish I hadn't. Yeah. Really? Not that it was about the movie, but yeah. I just wish I'd just let myself be yeah, pregnant. Yeah, just be pregnant, just be home. Those are the regrets. Mm -hmm. Not the ones that you said no to, but the ones you said yes to. Right. So yes. profound. Yes. Yes. On that note, I'd say thank you all for being part of the conversation. I thought that was the comedy dance. That was... <laughs> Hi, I'm Oprah. Hey, I'm Issa Rae. Catherine Hahn. Kevin Bacon. Billy Bob Thornton. Elizabeth Moss. Chris Jenner. Minnie Driver. And thanks for watching. Thanks, thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter. On YouTube. On YouTube. Hold on. One more time. Be sure to hit subscribe for more videos. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>